So what you're looking at on the screen here is a close-up of a page of a book. The words and the sentences on this page have been divided into paragraphs. In this video we're going to talk about paragraphs and how important they are to writing. So think about the last time you opened a book or a magazine or looked at the page of a website and you saw all the words on the page. You knew you had your work cut out for you. Reading's not always easy. We have to comprehend all these squiggly lines on the page or the screen. It's a lot of work. It can make you tired or it can make you hungry and you might want to eat a steak. If you're going to eat this steak, you wouldn't put the whole thing in your mouth at once. Or maybe you're a vegetarian. You wouldn't put this whole piece of vegetarian lasagna in your mouth at once. What would you do? You'd cut it into pieces like this gentleman. Why? So you can fit the food in your mouth and fill your belly. So you can eat. So you can get full and so you can not die. You also want to enjoy the taste of the food, and it'd be difficult to do if you put the whole thing in your mouth at once. You want to avoid choking, and you want to be perceived by others as normal, because if you were to put a whole steak in your mouth at once, that is not normal. So just look at this huge block of text. This text is not divided into paragraphs. Just look at that and don't even read it. How does that make you feel? Makes me feel kind of stressed out and overworked. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's a lot of text, and I don't know how to comprehend all of it because I'm not sure where the ideas separate. Um, if you were to read this, you'd see that it's all about a girl and how she came to appreciate the environment, um, how she went out into the ocean at first in Okinawa and saw all the beautiful um, coral, but then after a couple years she came back and all the coral was had vanished and it was horrible. So that's what this is about. But it would be a lot more helpful if this was divided into paragraphs. Because when that author wrote that, she wanted us to understand her point. She didn't want us to misunderstand it. Um, she didn't want us to think that this was about how she loved to swim or how she loved fish or um, a story about why she lived in Okinawa. She, the, the point of this is for the reader to come away with an understanding of her deep appreciation for the environment. That was her goal. She wanted her readers, she wanted to say that she had a deep appreciation for the environment. She wanted her readers to understand that exact thing. It was hard for her to do that without paragraphs. Paragraphs really would have helped. A paragraph is a collection of related sentences dealing with a single topic. What does that mean? It means that a paragraph is about one idea, and then the next paragraph is about another idea. All the sentences in a paragraph are related. They're all talking about the same idea the one single topic. A paragraph has four major characteristics. Let's talk about the first one. Unity. What does it mean to be united? Think about the United States. All the states come together for the same purpose, 
the same cause, united around a single idea or topic of freedom, independence. Paragraphs the same way. All the sentences need to be about one idea. So paragraphs should not wander around between ideas. They should be focused on one idea. And then when you want to move to the next idea, you move to the next paragraph. Let's look at some examples. Imagine we're writing a letter to our boss, and we work at Starbucks, and we're arguing that we deserve a raise. Instead of just a huge block of text with just a bunch of rambling sentences, we might want to divide our ideas into paragraphs, maybe come up with some different reasons why we deserve a raise. Let's look at an example of one of those paragraphs that has bad unity. In addition to my sparkling attendance record, I have also proven great skill with regards to the technical and artistic aspects of making an enjoyable espresso beverage. Whether it is pulling the perfect shot of espresso for a tall vanilla latte or blending two venti caramel frappuccinos at once and having them both turn out smooth and creamy, my skill in making coffee drinks at Starbucks is undeniable. I've had several customers tell me that they only visit our Starbucks when I'm working because I'm the only one who knows how to make their drinks correctly. They also tell me that I'm one of the most patient baristas they know. I look our customers in the eye, and I try to remember their names. This makes them feel at home and relaxes them after a long day at work. Mr. Conley says my drinks are as high quality as the ones he used to drink when he lived in Italy. So where does this <clears throat> paragraph lose its unity? I would say right around here. All this part. Seems like they got away from the idea about making great drinks and started talking about customer service. Let's look at a revised version. In addition to my sparkling attendance record, I've also proven great skill with regards to the all this part's the same. So um, I'm the only one who knows how to make their drinks correctly. Not that my fellow baristas are not adept at their jobs, but consider this example. Mr. Conley, who grew up in Italy, told me that my cappuccinos remind him of the ones he used to drink on the streets of Torino. Perhaps the reason I make such quality drinks is because I love coffee myself and I know what it's like to have the perfect coffee drink made for me. All I want for our customers is that same pleasure. So you could pretty much take out any sentence here and, it, and, and analyze it and you would find that it's about how this person makes great coffee drinks. A paragraph needs unity. Every sentence needs to be about one idea. Let's move on to the next characteristic of a good paragraph coherence should be easy to understand <clears throat> you need logical or verbal bridges between sentences and that just means that one paragraph can't be about one I mean sorry one sentence in a paragraph can't be about one thing and then you can't just jump to um, a different idea um, even if it's about the, the um, e even if the paragraph is unified, sometimes people can um, insert a sentence that uh, doesn't make sense with the sentence before. So think about it like this: think about a train. The the cars of a train are linked together. So one car starts here and then this one is linked to it and then this one is linked to it and then this one is linked to it and they all link together and they go in the same direction that's how we want our sentences to be let's look at an example of some bad coherence another pleasure that I get from being in a great coffee shop is experiencing excellent customer service so I try to provide this for every customer that comes in 
A coffee shop should be sparkling clean. There are so many surfaces that need to be wiped down. When a coffee thirsty person comes in the front door, I wait for them to approach the counter. Then I look at them in the eye and say hello. By this point, they are feeling like I want them there, which is important in creating a solid customer establishment relationship. I then take their order, ask them how their day is going, and complete the money transaction in no particular order. Making sure that I give correct change back is so important for a Starbucks employee. I used to be nervous working the cash register, but I have asked a lot of questions, and now I am confident my drawer is always balanced. So we're going along here at the beginning, talking about another pleasure is customer service. But then it kind of jumps off the rails here, and they start talking about you know, how they do a great job cleaning the store. And then they jump back into customer service. But then they they talk, start talking about money and registers and how the drawer is always balanced. So what we find is that <clears throat> this writer is lacking coherence between sentences. So what they did is they revised it, and let's see what they came up with. Another pleasure that I get from being in a great coffee shop is experiencing excellent customer service, so I try to provide this for every customer that comes in. When a coffee thirsty person comes in the front door, I wait for them to approach the counter. Then I look at them in the eye and say hello. By this point, they're feeling like I want them there, which is important in creating a solid customer establishment relationship. I then take their order, ask them how their day is going, and complete the money transaction in no particular order. I make sure that their drink is called out correctly to the barista and, if possible, thank them for coming in and invite them back. So they took out this part here about cleaning the store, and they changed this to... Um, explain customer service. So this is a great unified and coherent paragraph and this is what we're looking for. We also want topic sentences in our paragraphs. A topic sentence is the third characteristic of a great paragraph and it is basically a sentence that kind of sums up the whole paragraph. Oops, sorry. So you read one, you read this one sentence, and it, and this one sentence indicates what the whole paragraph is going to be about. This is so helpful to a reader to to come across a topic sentence. They don't have to guess what the paragraph is going to be about. Topic sentences usually are the first sentence in a paragraph, but they don't have to be. But for now, if you're just starting out. With, with this concept, and try putting them at the beginning of, of paragraphs. But once you become more comfortable, you can start moving topic sentences around. Let's read this. When I first came on as a barista, I watched my shift supervisors and how they communicated with the partners in their shift. A shift supervisor must understand all of the operations that take place on the floor. They must speak clearly and be able to think on their feet. I feel that my formal observations display that I am capable of all of these functions. However, I try to go above and beyond the calls, call of duty by being patient and listening to my shift partners when an issue arises because this is the only way I will know what the problem is and how I can help alleviate it. So what's this paragraph about? Well, we might think it's about shift supervisors or being in, in charge of people, but we're, we don't really know. We kind of have to guess. Remember that this... <clears throat> The purpose of this letter is to give reasons why the person deserves a raise. Without a topic sentence here, the boss would have to guess um, what what the what this reason is. You see what happened there? We just inserted a topic sentence. This whole paragraph is about this topic sentence. Now this could have come maybe at the end or in the middle. It depends. But look how effective it is to put it at the beginning here. Once you become more comfortable using topic sentences and developing paragraphs, you can start making different choices about how you want to uh, construct your paragraphs. 
The fourth characteristic is adequate development. Your paragraphs need to be full of information. If you have a paragraph that only has like two or three sentences, it's probably the case that it is not developed adequately and that there's more you could say about that idea. This can be difficult for some writers because they say, they say, well, once I've said something, you know, there's nothing else to say about it. So if you have that problem and if you're struggling with making your paragraphs long enough, basically, to really uh, develop the idea, um, try these tips. Use examples. So somewhere in the paragraph you could say, for example, and then um, provide an example. You could cite data. You could use others' ideas. This is a quotation, and it's set off by quotation marks. This here is called an in-text citation, and we'll talk about those later. You tell a story. The first time I became aware of pollution was in the summer of 1999. I just got into summer camp. Define terms. Another way to catch a fish is by using a trot line, a long string which is stretched across the lake. Along the string are placed other strings which hang down into the water and have hooks on them with bait. You can compare and contrast two ideas, or, or two, um, two examples maybe. This paragraph is about um, defining what a good leader is, and they compare that with a bad leader. A chronology of events also works. <clears throat> this looks like an informative piece about entertaining guests, and they say one of the best ways to do this is to have a storytelling night. First, let your guests know what you have prepared before they get to the house. When they get there, give them all a notebook. Then, blah, 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 blah. So make sure every paragraph is unified, coherent, has a topic sentence, and is well-developed. These are the four characteristics of a good paragraph. The basic rule of thumb with paragraphing is to keep one idea to one paragraph. If you begin to transition into a new idea, it belongs in a new paragraph. There's some simple ways to tell if you are on the same topic or a new one. You can have one idea and several bits of supporting evidence within a single paragraph. You can also have several points in a paragraph as long as they relate to the overall topic of the paragraph. If the single points start to get long, then perhaps elaborating on each of them and placing them in their own paragraphs is the route to go. So just because you're writing a paragraph and you notice it starts to get really long um, and there's a couple sentences in there that need to get cut because they're not really about that idea that that paragraph is dealing with, doesn't necessarily mean you have to throw them away for good. Those might be other ideas that you want to give their own paragraphs to. And that's why we draft and revise over and over so that we can catch those things. So remember, readers have a hard job. Cut up their food for them. Use paragraphs. I want to leave this PowerPoint for a second. And... Um, I want to show you this. This is the um, huge block of text about the environment and the coral that we looked at earlier. And I put it into a, a Word document in MLA format because um, I want to show you what, what does a paragraph look like. As you can see, there aren't paragraphs here. It's just one huge block of text. Um, in MLA, we need things to be double-spaced, and right here they're not. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight all this and double-space it. Okay. Now, how, how does that look different? To me, it looks easier to read. But it could be even easier to read. So let's divide this into paragraphs so we can see what they look like. Remember that the beginning of every um, academic 
um, writing um, project should be um, indented. So if you hit the tab key, it'll bring it in five spaces. Now I've already read this. Um, the point of this is to show you what paragraphs look like. So I already figured out where the paragraph breaks are. This is all about um, basically the coral. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to I'm going to um, make a new paragraph. So I'm going to click my cursor there, and then I'm just going to hit enter, and it already indented it for me. And um, in this latest edition of Word. Sometimes you might have to hit tab again. Now this last part is all about humans. So I'm going to do the same, th same thing here. There you go. That's what paragraphs look like. And I'm not going to tell you how many sentences belong in a paragraph because it, it's really a choice you should make. Some paragraphs will be shorter than this, maybe a tad bit longer. Also, if you don't want the space between um, all of your paragraphs, here's something you can do in Word. I'm going to highlight all this text again. I'm going to uh, go up here to Paragraph, and I'm going to click on this. Um, don't add space. Click that and click OK. To me, that looks better. Looks cleaner. So that's what paragraphs look like. Paragraphs are for ourselves, so they can we can uh, they help us organize our own thoughts and ideas. And they help us stay on track through the drafting and revising process. Maybe even more importantly, they're for the reader. The reader can't take in everything at once. You can't eat a whole steak at once. You have to chop it into pieces. And the reader, they technically could read the whole thing without paragraphs. But it's going to be a lot harder for them to understand the ideas that you want them to understand the way you want them to understand them. Using paragraphs, you can direct their attention in certain ways by putting similar ideas together into paragraphs. And you want the reader to enjoy your thoughts and ideas instead of focusing on your writing style. So the way you make paragraphs is a choice, and it depends upon what you're writing, why you're writing it, and who you're writing it for.